Sri Lanka President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is on a plane heading to Singapore, according to multiple reports. It's all about fighting inflation as MAS tightens monetary policy for the third time this year. And Singapore confirms a second local monkeypox case that is not linked to the first. Good evening, you're watching The Big Story with me, Harianto Diman. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you will not miss an episode. Sri Lanka's embattled President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is reportedly en route to Singapore after fleeing from his crisis-hit country amid anti-government protests. Mr Rajapaksa is said to be aboard a Saudi Arabia Airlines flight from the Maldives and some reports have said that he is headed to Saudi Arabia via Singapore. According to data from flightradar24.com, the flight that he's on was being tracked by almost 5,000 users as at 3.43pm Singapore time. It's said to be the world's most tracked flight today, underscoring the massive global interest in Sri Lanka's political affairs. Along with his wife and two bodyguards, Mr Rajapaksa fled Sri Lanka early on Wednesday as protesters stormed his residences, demanding his resignation. He was expected to formally resign then, but he, has stopped, but he has not yet stepped down officially. This despite his earlier promise to do so. Now we will continue to bring you the latest updates on Mr Rajapaksa on StraitsTimes.com as well as our Facebook and YouTube channels. Now don't forget to click subscribe to stay informed and activate the bell icon on YouTube to catch live news updates. In other news, Singapore's central bank surprising everyone for the second time this year with a further tightening of its Sing dollar policy. MAS saying in a statement, this policy move building on previous tightening moves should help slow the momentum of inflation and ensure medium-term price stability. Singapore's core inflation now expected to come in between 3 and 4% this year, up from MAS's earlier forecast range of 25 to 3.5%. And headline inflation is now likely to come in at 5-6%, to 6 higher than the earlier estimate of 45 to 5.5%. What does this mean for Singapore and Singaporeans? Well, here to help us answer some questions is DBS's senior economist, Irvin Sia. Irvin, what do you think triggered the tightening of the Singh dollar policy? Is it telling that it comes just the day after US inflation surged past 9%? Well, I mean, on surface, most people uh, would like to, you know, make that connection. Um, but I think the MAS focus is really about, you know, the inflation that we currently is experiencing in Singapore. Um, the headline number has remained persistently high. Uh, and in fact, in my opinion, the headline number will continue to stay above 5% in the coming months. And then another uh, focus is the core inflation number. Um, the MAS today have revised upward uh, both its headline as well as core inflation forecast. And that basically... Uh, implies that inflation uh, put, could potentially rise above the previous uh, forecast of the MES. So therefore, you know, with a change in terms of uh, expectation and forecast on inflation, both core and headline, and I think that is the main reason why the MES, you know, have decided to act preemptively and decisively to anchor uh, and tame inflation. Avin, help us understand, uh, what is the impact of a stronger Singapore currency, particularly in the context of the current global economy? What does it mean for Singaporeans? Okay, well, we talk about, you know, inflation being a concern uh, for the economy, for the authority, as well as for all Singaporeans and businesses. Um, and what we have seen thus far globally is that inflationary pressure has remained very, very high. 
Um, in fact, if you look at food prices, commodity prices, energy prices, it has continued to escalate. Although we have seen some bit of a stability, I mean, stabilization recently, um, but you know, it has a, you know, a cascading effect on the rest of the economy. Now, having a stronger Sing dollar essentially will help to keep all this imported inflationary pressure at bay because ultimately we need to understand that for Singapore, a big part of what we consume and also what goes into the productions of uh, goods and services in Singapore are actually imported. Um, our estimate is roughly at about 60 to 70 percent. It is a very high threshold. So therefore, the most effective way to curtail and to keep this important inflationary pressure at bay is to maintain a strong Sing dollar. On that note, then what about exports then? How, how would it affect exports uh, for Singapore? Because Singapore is quite reliant on exports as well. Correct. And this is where it will require some very delicate uh, calibrations when it comes to policy. Um, the MAS would have to essentially ensure that you know, a stronger Sing dollar is strong enough to keep imported inflation at bay, but not too strong such that it jeopardizes our export performance and then in turn on growth. So this is where you know, policy calibration is an art. Uh, and I personally feel that you know, the MAS is definitely on top of the matter. Uh, and that although we do see the Sing dollar appreciating against the regional currency, it has continued to actually maintain a fairly, uh, you know, depreciative kind of stance against the US dollar. And do know that global trade typically are conducted in US dollar. Irvin, before I let you go, I also wanted to ask you this as well. Uh, what do you make of today's GDP numbers? 4.8% uh, growth in the second quarter, year on year, but flat on the quarter. Well, um, first and foremost, it's very much in line with our expectation. We were originally forecasting, you know, 4.6% year on year and 0.1% Q on Q. So it is very much in line with our expectation. And the reason why we are taking a more cautious view, uh, particularly if you look at the sequential uh, number, as in the Q on Q number, is the fact that we have seen uh, a, a significant spike up in terms of, you know, the uncertainties and also risks on the growth front. Uh, we saw basically a slowdown in, in China growth. And in fact, China, I mean, we are talking about, you know, one of the biggest export market for Singapore because of its zero COVID policy and the, and the corresponding lockdown in many of the, uh, you know, cities in China. What we have seen is that a significant uh, disruption to regional supply chain as well as China's own domestic demand. And that in turn has affected Singapore's uh, export performance. Also, we have seen several other risks in the sense that we are getting, uh, you know, a tighter monetary conditions, um, you know, globally, and also, you know, the Ukraine and uh, Russia war, which also occur in the second quarter. Now, all this basically has compounded the risk on the Singapore economy. So, which is why you get a zero uh, sequential growth. Now, why is this significant? Because just imagine if it is not zero, we act and is negative 0.1%, then the risk of a technical recession in Singapore has increased. Because when you have a negative second quarter growth, and what if you get a, another negative in the third quarter, essentially you get a two consecutive quarter of a decline in Singapore, and that is essentially a technical recession. So we have narrowly averted uh, you know, the chance of a technical recession. Irvin, thank you for your perspectives. Irvin Sia, Senior Economist at DBS. Singapore has detected its second local case of monkeypox, bringing the total number of infections here to five. Now, according to the Health Ministry, the patient, who is a 48-year-old British man residing in Singapore, tested positive for monkeypox on Wednesday and is currently warded at the National Centre for Infectious Diseases. His condition is stable. MOH says contact tracing is ongoing and the case is not linked to any of the previous cases here. A quick look at the monkeypox cases in Singapore. Adding today's case, there are two local monkeypox infections reported so far and three imported ones. None of the five cases reported here so far are linked to one another. With the global travel picking up, more people are heading to Singapore. The Singapore Tourism Board expecting about 4 to 6 million visitors here this year. 
thanks to a few key regional markets like Indonesia, India, Malaysia and Australia. Visitors will also be flying in for major events here, including the Formula One night race and the Bloomberg New Economy Forum later in the year. In the first half of 2022, there were 1.5 million visitor arrivals, nearly 12 times more compared to the same time last year. Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung and his wife Madam Ho Cheng will receive royal honours from the Sultan of Brunei on Saturday. PM Lee will receive the most esteemed family order, while Madam Ho will receive the most distinguished order of Paduka Sri Laila Jasa First Class from the Sultan. Mr Lee and Madam Ho will attend the awards presentation ceremony at the Istana Nurul Iman. It's been a very busy day for Liverpool players Thiago and Fabinho and the rest of the travelling squad. The highlight of today for some lucky Liverpool fans, a meet and greet session with the players. Supporters posing for pictures with the players but safely distanced from them. Jurgen Klopp's team will take on Crystal Palace at the Singapore National Stadium on Friday for the Standard Chartered Singapore Trophy 2022. The Reds arrived yesterday for the second part of their pre-season tour of Asia. Those are our top stories today. Now don't forget to subscribe to us by clicking the red button below. I'm Harianto Diman. See you tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.